welcome back to Questions Over Coffee. My name is Kevin Smith. It's good to see you again. Want a cup of coffee? Today, the question is, what does the Bible say about divorce? The divorce rate has seemed to, to skyrocket in the last 50 years. So, what does the Bible say about this? What does it say? What is God's opinion about us divorcing our spouse? Well, to look at this, um, the first thing we want to look at is uh, the Old Testament, actually. Let's look at Malachi chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. Let's read together. Yet you say, for what reason? Because the Lord has been a witness between you and the wife of your youth, against whom you have dealt treacherously, though she is your companion and your wife by covenant. But not one has done so who has a remnant of the Spirit. And what did that one do while he was seeking a godly offspring? Take heed then to your spirit, and let no one deal treacherously against the wife of your youth. For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel, and him who covers his garment with wrong, says the Lord of hosts. So take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. One of the first things that Yahweh points out through Malachi is that the people have been dealing treacherously. Now, all throughout the book, God has been uh, telling them, this is what you're doing wrong. This is what you're doing. This is what you're doing wrong. And it starts with the priests and the people who who know God, or at least should, and it go it trickles down to, um, for lack of a better word, the uh, common Jew. So he gets to this point and he says, "You have dealt treacherously," and he is speaking specifically here about dealing treacherously with their spouse, their wife. You know, they're not treating them appropriately. They're uh, quote-unquote upgrading, in a sense, where they are um, deciding, you know, I'm just not happy with you anymore. No real good reason other than you just don't, don't make me happy. Um, you're not as young. Maybe you're not as pretty as you once were. Oh, but look, I'm going to upgrade. And God says, I hate divorce. I hate it. Okay. So that's God's opinion toward divorce. He hates it. It wasn't supposed to be that way. Uh, it is a breaking of covenant between a man and his wife. Now, Jesus also deals with the Pharisees about this very question. The Pharisees come to him, and they're seeking to test him. So uh, they pose a number of questions, and here is one of them. Uh, we're going to read from uh, Matthew chapter 19. We're going to start in verse 3. Um, their question is in verse 3, but we're going to read through verse um, we're going to read through verse 6. Let's read together. Some Pharisees came to Jesus, testing him and asking, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason at all? And he answered and said, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh, so that they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Okay, so the first thing they uh, the first thing Jesus says is, God made this union. Don't separate it. Don't let man get in the way of the union between man and woman that God has made, it should be honored. 
But remember, the Pharisees are trying to catch him in uh, what he says. So they're going to clarify something from uh, the law of Moses. They ask Jesus about the command that Moses gave. Let's read Matthew 19, 7 through 9. They said to him, Why then did Moses command to give her a certificate of divorce and send her away? He said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it has not been this way. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for immorality and marries another woman commits adultery. Wow! Uh, Jesus says the only reason God allowed that was because their hearts were already hard. They already made up their mind. You know, I don't like this woman, whatever the case may be, so let's just get rid of her. You know, and God allowed that. But then Jesus goes a step further and says, if you divorce your wife or husband and you marry another one, the only good reason, the only acceptable reason is if they have been unfaithful to you, immoral. Otherwise, you're committing adultery. That's pretty cut and dried. Um, God hates divorce. As we've already said, it's a breaking of covenant. And he says, don't do that. This covenant that you've made with your spouse is important. There are only two biblical reasons to get remarried. One is the death of the spouse. At that point, the, the covenant has been has been uh, canceled by the death of that spouse. You're, you're free to remarry. The second reason is that spouse has been unfaithful to the marriage. They have broken the covenant, which allows for divorce and remarriage. But it does not ever mandate that that is the uh, the course that must be taken. There's always reconciliation if both parties are willing to agree and um, to decide to be faithful to one another again. So, since God hates divorce, and divorce was not meant to be in the, the case, or in uh, even the thought processes, of a marriage. Let me ask you this. What do you do to safeguard your marriage so that you remain faithful to your spouse and so that you help your spouse to remain faithful to you? What do you do to safeguard it? Because it's very, very important. Leave me a comment in the section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on Questions Over Coffee. Thank you for our time together. I look forward to the next time. Keep pressing forward.